The program is held this morning on ITV, another important discussion segment where we'll be looking at the plan removal of fair subsidy and of course the impact, general impact of uh, what will follow. To do this, we have our regular here. Uh, he's supposed to be a professor <laughs> of economics, but I don't know why. Ishao Ali, very good morning to you. Thank you very much. I'm a student of economics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. It's a good thing you have someone who has all the theories as well as the practical. Someone who will be crisscrossing from the uh, classicals to the new classicals to the Keynesians and what have you. Marshallians. And Marshallians. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know that when it comes to the general price of goods and services, there is always a multiplier. You know, like uh, a trigger. And the trigger is when there's an increase in pump price. Pump price is a catalyst to every other thing you think of. If the price of a uh, liter increases, it means the transport, transportation will increase. It means the cost of bringing goods, for example, carrying a truckload of, of, um, of beans from Meiduguri or Gombe to Enugu or Imo would definitely increase. And the cost of carrying Gari from Delta or uh, Auchi to uh, Kanu or Zamfara will also increase. And same thing goes. And if you are, of course, around in this uh, recent time, you discover that the price, I mean, yeah, should I say price now, or the transport fare for Okada has also increased. Is 100% increase. And if you're around an uh, area like um, Marabaya in that axis, or Guagalada that axis, or Zuba axis, you discover that the vehicles no longer go carry direct. They have a place they want to stop, and then from there they carry to that destination you are going to, which means that everyone is trying to ensure that profit is maximized. So let me get your opinion concerning uh, the plan removal of failed subsidy, even as we are beginning to have increase in the prices of goods and services. Uh, before we dwell so much into the mm. removal, mm. there is going to be causes and effects of what triggered. But not just doing that, there is also a need also to remind Mr. President mm. in 2020 budget he vehemently emphasized of having collective prosperity. I have mentioned it times with that number and I will discuss with Mr. Ikaro Atta last year on the same issue. So now Mr. President should be remembering that he has promised to bring collective prosperity into our GDP. Mm -hmm. Meaning that the purchasing powers of all consumers within the same economy is going to be improved. Mm -hmm. If that consumption, uh, if that purchasing power is reduced, mm -hmm. then it means that the prosperity is going to be negative. Mm -hmm. That is for Mr. President. I want to also remind the central bank that their mm -hmm. role in maintaining price stability. That price stability is very, very important for an economy to record growth. Whoever wants to advance theory, who wants, who are the, whoever wants to advance whatever policy, if collective prosperity, if prosperity is not recorded, then it means there is so much to do. No economy, no good economic policy can succeed without prosperity. Now, coming back to your earlier background, about the changes in the general price level. We cannot just go into discussing the general price level without reintroducing what is called inflation. And what is the rate of inflation today? So that if tomorrow the inflation rate changes, we will know that we are advancing or we are drawing back. Inflation, in general terms, is a persistent, seemingly irresistible. That irresistibility 
That is what you have just explained. Everybody wants to maximize profit. profit. Or everybody wants to maximize benefit. The price takers and price seekers. All of them. Everybody wants to establish that let me have some benefit from this economy. Consumer want to max maximize his satisfaction. I should give an example. Road users, you pay. That payment you made is supposed to be stable over a period of time. Because if you eventually have those on fixed income and they are challenged with persistent changes in prices, their consumption is distorted. Their purchasing power is going to be eroded. And also, the GDP growth rate of all sectors of the economy will be affected. So, what is the alternative? Coming back to pump price or PMS, AGO, kerosene. What is the best price for an economy? Looking at the size of the GDP, looking, looking at the proportion of the population, looking at the income group of the population. So when you are not putting all this into consideration, you are bound to have and consequences of that same macroeconomic changes that you are introducing. Skag and Nelson, in their macroeconomic analysis, individual choice and its consequences. There is no choice you make without some consequences. Vulnerability also is given serious attention in establishing price regime. You are rich, he is rich, he is not rich, he is poor, he is poorest, he is autonomous. So consumers are divided into different classes. What is the percentage of autonomous consumers? That is consumers within an economy who, want, who must be consuming but without income. So now, in my own opinion, I have already established a year ago that Nigerian citizens are not prepared for a high PMS pricing policy. They are not prepared. They are not prepared not because they are not ready to consume the product, but their income is not going to be favorable to the economy. And, is, and to the polity. Why? Because of trends of events. We have seen how, PP, how PMS price was changed from 11 Naira to 22 Naira. We have seen what came after, afterwards. Stabilization measures. We have also seen how attempts were made by several government authorities in Nigeria in changing the price. In some cases, it was resisted. Even if it was to change from 65 Naira to 100 Naira, it was resisted. Labor. So, that resistance has to be carefully managed. So that it won't lead to... Yeah, no, consequences. Yeah. There is no decision without consequence. And some will hide behind. You know, when poverty is mentioned, the group that are affected quickly organize. Spontaneously. Spontaneously. And when they organize, they took an action which they are not even ready to take that action. And that is why in many economies, it's being regulated in paces. In paces. So that was the attempt to regulate the petroleum price in Nigeria by removing subsidy. I remember during Obasanjo's regime, the argument centered around subsidy was 12 naira 50 kobo. 12 naira 50 kobo. And labor resisted. And measures were given. At the end of the day, certain considerations were made, adjustment was made. So I am expecting this same price that was stuck not to be adhered to because mm -hmm. 
there are, there are a lot of issues surrounding the GDP growth rate, like I initially said in my background, and also some political connotations attached to this PMS. Some of the political connotation is the fact that when this price... Okay, so, uh, uh, let me just hold you here. Yeah. I will go for a sh very short break. When we come back, we will now look at the 314 era, how peaceable it is. A quick break. It is still this morning on ITV. Uh, thanks for still staying there. And of course, the discussion has been with uh, Ishao Aliu, who is an economy expert, and we're looking at the plan removal of free of subsidy. So much has been said by him before the short break. Now, I want to ask if the price of palm price is 300 and, um, of palm, rather, the price of palm is 340 naira come next year, which is just by the Kana. Uh, what will not be the percentage increase in general price? Uh, depends on the elasticity of all the products. Each product in the market has a different model of elasticity. And a changes in price will affect A, B, or C, depending on the availability of substitute in certain extent. Mm -hmm. In certain extent, it will depend on the supply of that good. But what is going to happen immediately is the fact that when pump price changes, there is going to be general change in cost of transportation, that's the first. Mm -hmm. Then there is going to be change in the cost of production. Then the cost of distribution of any good and services depend on the locations. Coverage. If you produce tomatoes from far north, probably northeast, and you are transporting it to Lagos, if the, transport cost, if the transport cost changes by 100%, as we have seen in other cases, then definitely we are expecting that same product to change above 100% of the, of, the, of the original price. That, that is obvious. That is one. Two, it also depends on the reaction of consumers who are purchasing this product in the first instance. That reaction is not, is not going to be measured. It cannot be measured because of the fa a lot of tendencies. Indifference curve analysis always reveal certain level of disturbances and reaction with regards to income and price. Because it's a curve joining all combinations of good that consumer consumes. And in certain extent, that consumer remains in dif indifference at what particular commodity is consuming. If you are consuming rice, you check the elasticity function of that same product, rice, and the availability of substitute, and joint demand as attached to the consumption of that rice. There is no way price of food will not change, and price of clothes or, or, or joint demand cannot increase. There is no possibility. So we are expecting a general change in price as a result of change in pound price of PMS because it, is, it has remained a determinant for a long period of time in Nigerian economy. Many things, we have said them, and we have tried to call the attention that, look, yes, of course, government has no business doing business, okay? Yes, of course, this uh, uh, purchasing power parity sometimes refer to us if pump price in Ghana is 540 naira, but you don't look at the size of income of the Ghanaians, and you are making a correlation, you are deceiving yourself. Mm -hmm. If the pump price in Saudi Arabia is 10 times greater than 500 naira, for instance, mm -hmm. but you are not looking at the income of an average Saudi Arabia. Disposable income. Uh, disposable income. So you are bound to make a mistake. And sometimes environmental factors. Uh, or even in the UK. Where or even in the UK. Yeah, so price, I, used to, I, I used to be that. ashamed when I saw people trying to make relationship between change in price in country A and country B. Even within the same Nigeria, changes in price of good it is, is defined by, the, by, by a lot of factors. The price of tomatoes in Kano is not, like, it's not the same price of tomatoes in Benin City. 
It's the same country. It's not possible. So it cannot be possible. Because of what? Transport costs. So when you change the general price, not regarding point of distribution, point of production, and point of sales. Some product may remain constant because like goods that are not frequently demanded by, 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 by consumers, they may remain at a certain level static, unchanged. Even with the change in pump price. But the general vulnerability has to do with regular basics. Essentials. Essential. You need to go to work. The transporter needs to buy fuel. And he needs to make an adjustment. Because nobody. Adam Smith. Vehicle, no, he, not only the, that. The, spare parts will not be, the price of the spare yes, will not what be Yes. What, what Adam Smith was always saying that. If you see a bakery. If you see a bread in the market, it's not that the baker is so benevolent to produce bakery because he wants to enter paradise. He's producing bake, he's just producing bread because he wants to make profit. In certain excess, in, in certain ex abnormal profit. If it's possible. If it is possible. So now a consumer is constrained first with the income. Assuming the income is relative. To the price, there won't be much difficulty. But looking at the gap between income and the consumption product, that's where there is going to be a problem because each individual consumer is going to be constrained of, on having. And that constraint, when you take the multiplier of constraint of cons consumer one, consumer two, consumer three, and they now jointly agree, we cannot agree on this price then there is going to be a lot of challenges politically. Now, government must listen to labor in the first instance because labor for a long period have not succeeded in bringing Nigerians together. But the government is taking certain decisions, not looking at the consequences of probably some may now say, okay, why? Why 340 on the eve of election? Why? Mm -hmm. Some will begin to ask different questions. Some will say, are they ready to crucify this party by bringing 340? Who are those behind it? And also, what about the promises made of reactivating the refineries? Because that 100% <laughs> increment that we may likely see come next year uh, may render the 30,000 naira, naira minimum wage worthless. As I, as I speak to you now, the 30,000 naira is worthless. Because mm -hmm. under the United Nations uh, hum, uh, Cap Human Capital mm -hmm. Development Index, mm -hmm. it is expected that you take care of your health. And based on the Nigerian scenario, you that income of 30,000 is not only for a single individual. It is for you, your spouse, and at least three children. Within that same, you will consume daily. Within the same, you will now provide for health. Within that same income, you provide for education. And pr within that same saving, you are expected to have little savings against rainy days. Within so that this, same income, within the same expected same. to send so to some, some, if, some family if, members. If that income cannot perform these four identities, is worthless. Okay, so <laughs> what is the way out now? The way out... Can we just suspend the plan removal of... Government something? has an alternative, like I said, the other time. And that is why, from different reports, the president probably listened to people like us and decided to say, okay, NNPC continue to pay the gap to maintain the price. But through agitation from other quarters, no. Let us share this money. Share it to do what? What is the percentage of purchasing power erosion, the erosion of purchasing power in the, if you quantify what the economy is losing, it's better you invest with the excess crude cells to maintain and to also hasten 
the development of local refineries which will which is the only solution the establishment of local refinery appears to be a mirage it, it remains a mirage because certain individuals are enjoying other benefit outside that box so it means we can't do anything to we can do it we can do functional. it nigeria is a state comparing nigeria with other produ oil producing state is not going to make make it better for us whether you spoke on Venezuela or Saudi Arabia, their refining capacity is so large, greater than what we are doing. In Nigeria, the refining capacity is what we are looking because we have high consumption, because we use high, high foreign exchange. 40% of our foreign exchange request is used to import PMS. So if you produce locally, that 40% of foreign exchange will not be out would of the it, economy, will, yeah. will remain in the economy. Yeah. And that remaining that in the economy will favor the will fav Not only in era, will favor unemployment. Will deal with unemployment because there will be investment in critical infrastructure. There is going to be a lot of facilities, especially in energy, so that manufacturing work can be going on. Small and medium enterprises can be going on. But even now with the challenge of changing the pump price of PMS, as we now contend it only to a transport cost, we didn't go into production zone where SMEs that are producing either processing gari through cassava and they are using possibly 10 liters of PMS at 162 naira. Now they are going to multiply it. If it is multiplied, the cost of gari will change because the input the variable cost attached to the producing of one that particular item is changed and they are out to make a minimum of normal profit and if that is not meant if the price is too high and consumer cannot buy then that smes can produce without sales and they will not go and close down so how many percent of uh, nigerians will lose their job if this happens no it depends it depends on it's proportionate like I always say, this scenario that I gave you, how many, how many industries can sustain purchases of PMS at 340 and then producing and sells at a price that is going to be friendly? That remains a mirage. That remains on the, on the question mark. So, but, however, the general behavior is the fact that Nigerians are very patient people. Nigerian market is very accommodative. No matter the price, because of the size of population, you see many people patronizing. But at the extreme of certain percentage that have to do without. That is why probably the prediction of the IMF that about 12 million Nigerians are going to join poverty club. Not just merely because they are not willing to work. They are willing to work, but their income cannot absorb the changes in the general price. And if they cannot, because two issues are involved. One is the income. Two is the type of income. If the income is fixed, I told you, it's going to be a problem. Inflation, one of the most drastic issues attached to inflation persistently is that it affects normally those on fixed income more, uh, more, more uh, in a more voluminous manner than those on flexible income a taxi driver has a flexible income that is why he can shift quickly and then reduce the, the range at which he collects money if you are moving from possibly from zuba sorry, from Area 1 to Tafa, local government in Niger State, which was supposed to be a straight journey, you will end up having two journeys or three different journeys mm -hmm. at different prices. Mm -hmm. So that will affect productivity of any individual. That frustration alone will affect productivity. And if it affects pro productivity, it's going to affect the production. And if it affects the production, it's going to affect the general G the GDP as nominally presented including that is the current price level at which goods and services are offered for selling so the market. so the long and short is that 
your verdict, we are not ready for this removal. No, the economy is not ready for that price at this particular moment. And there is need for government, like I said, a year ago I was here, and we aid our view in relation to what we think government can do. Forget about sharing money to state and local government. We have seen how a uh, 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 bailout to a state for education is discovered, not used. So it's a minus to the economy. So I am not saying that most of these governors are not going to use perfectly the, 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 the bailout that is advancing to them. But those that needed bailout are the masses of this country who came out in mass to vote for this government in order for their prosperity to be recorded at their own uh, 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 extreme benefit. Well, thank you so much, Professor Ishao Ali. Ishao Ali Mala. He's an you. economic expert. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Yeah, we hope that the relevant authorities will have taken note and somehow uh, review what you have said. By good grace. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so we'll take a quick break. When we come back, we shall be looking at what the papers are saying today.